Good morning. If you have decided to study and you want to become a professional hypnotherapist, keep watching our 10 videos about clinical hypnosis. Hypnotherapy is an effective technique with which you can help and improve the quality of life of a great number of your future patients. Remember, read the description of this video where you can find a link to free training classes on clinical hypnosis. And also, you can download sell ebooks also free. The information in this video is extracted from our book Direct Clinical Hypnosis, Deep Hypnosis, of our publisher Clinical Hypnotherapy, registered with ISBN. Direct Clinical Hypnosis The Pain Case Study Example Part 1 Case Study of Pain with Hypnosis Patient who comes to consultation, middle-aged woman with a history of chronic pain in the abdominal region of 25 years of duration. During this time, she underwent multiple medical tests such as CAT scan, lamparoscopy, contrast X-rays, colonoscopy, gastroscopy, complete blood tests, tumor markers, etc. All these tests were negative. All these tests were negative. In other words, nothing abnormal was found at a physical level. The patient tells us that the pain is so irresistible that she even thinks of suicide as the only solution to end her suffering. We do not know how or why, after doing all these tests and finding nothing physical, this patient with a 25-year history of pain is not referred to neurology or psychiatry to treat this pain. Because if it is not physical, it is neurological or psychological. However, we are not here to judge other professionals, but to take care of our patients. And we try to do so with all our professionalism without forgetting that we are treating people that is to say, human beings. After conducting a semi-structured interview, passing the appropriate tests and basing ourselves on the DSM-4, we diagnose our patient as F45.0 somatization disorder 300.81 plus F41.1 generalized anxiety disorder. 300.02. Somatization disorder is a polysymptomatic disorder that begins before the age of 30, persists for several years, and is characterized by a combination of gastrointestinal, sexual, pseudoneurological, and especially pain symptoms. The most common destination for pain signals in the brain is the thamulus. It has been demonstrated in several studies that if we visualize with a brain scanner the brain activity of a patient undergoing a hypnosis session, we observe that the brain area that provokes pain signals, primary cerebral cortex, is much reduced in activity and the area that blocks pain signals, anterior cingulate cortex and basal ganglia is much more active. Therefore, this shows that hypnosis prevents pain signals from reaching the parts of the brain where they are processed. Hypnosis achieves control of certain brain areas, as demonstrated by imagining studies and brain activity recorded in electroencephalograms. After applying a painful stimulus to the skin, sensitive fibers transmit the pain impulse through the spinal cord, pathways to the various brain structures responsible for picking up and interpreting the different stimuli and processing the appropriate response in each case. The activity of the thamulus, one of the most important brain centers, brain center for processing bodily sensations can be modulated by certain behaviors through biofeedback mechanisms. 
in this specific case, it was totally impossible for us to induce this patient to a hypnosis session, as she was very upset by the pain. She was crying and even screaming. That is why we decided to combine hypnosis with pharmacological therapy. Of course, we are not allowed to prescribe medication, as we are just psychologists and hypnotists. Although, in the faculty of psychology, they force us to study psychopharmacology. But well, this is another subject that does not belong in this particular case. Knowing the origin of the pain and the specific medication for it, we turn to our neuropsychiatrist to prescribe our patient the appropriate medication to alleviate or calm the pain and thus be able to continue with the hypnoid therapy. In this case, the appropriate medication would be Lyrica, pregabalin at high doses. Our collaborator agreed with our diagnosis and the treatment to follow. His diagnosis was hypothalamic dysfunction. On the fifth day of treatment, we had the patient ready for the hypnosis sessions, as the pain had calmed down a little. Previously, it was practically impossible not only to introduce her to hypnosis, but also to relax her, as the pain was very intense and prevented any action on our part. On a scale of 0 to 10, the patient indicated a 10 of pain. After the fifth day of the pharmacological treatment, she showed a 7 of pain, and after three hypnosis sessions, she indicated a 2 of pain. Nowadays, she feels a 1 of pain, without taking any type of analgesic. Before coming to us, she had been prescribed very strong painkillers, including morphine patches. The hypnotic treatment consisted of the following exercises. HPC's method to induce trance, application of a key. If you're interested in learning more about clinical hypnosis, watch our next video, Direct Clinical Hypnosis, the pain case study example, part two. Remember, with the description of this video, we can find a link to free training classes on clinical hypnosis. And also, you can download self free ebooks. If you have any questions, add them in the comments area. On this topic and many others, we'll talk about in the channel and in the videos that we'll publish. So, if you're interested, do not miss our next videos. Thank you very much.